Joffamo is a variety streamer who creates paintings and drawings live on Twitch. In this interview, we'll find out how he got started, what's good and bad about Twitch as a platform, and what hardware and software he uses to go live. We'll also find out how he maintains such a nice atmosphere and how his channel grew so quickly, because he hasn't actually been going that long. And if you go to squares.tv slash joff, you can see all of the information we've talked about just to provide a bit more context to the conversation. My name is Michael Forrest, and this is Squares TV. My name's Joff. I go by Joff online. When it comes to like the live streaming stuff, I was quite interested in maybe just giving it a shot because I'd seen a couple of other like smaller streamers start and I was like, I would, you know, I want to get out of my comfort zone a lot. You know, there isn't a lot of opportunities to do that during lockdown. A lot of people were drawn to live streaming because of the lockdown and how long it'd been going on for. And it was just something to new to focus on and get involved in. I never wanted to be like a game streamer, but I've always been a bit of an artist and I was wondering if I would maybe be able to roll in doing art live on stream and having a bit of a chat. So how was it to start with? It's difficult, especially in the beginning. And um, when, I, when I was first starting out streaming, you know, <laughs> there's no one watching. I did what, what I ended up starting doing before I, I went on stream was when I was just like playing games on my own in, in this room and um, I would start like, speaking to myself <laughs> um, as I was playing the game just to try and get like a, what it would feel like to sit there and like chat away and then yeah when I first started doing it for real that that's all it was it, it really was just like playing the game and just trying to have a bit of like banter and a bit of chat but it is it's very difficult when no one's interacting with you did you have any problem with sort of trolls or anything to start with? There are definitely people that will look for channels that have no viewers or no chatters and come in and try and be a nuisance and try and be a troll. And you're in a really hard position because you're like, well, you want to you want to just get rid of that person. You want to ban them. You don't want to interact with them. But at the same time, they are the only person interacting with you. So you're like, you try and give them a bit of leeway. I've started banning people, even if they're the only one in chat, if they're being obnoxious. But That's the best thing to do. It really is the best thing to do. You shouldn't entertain it, really. So what did you do to start building that early following from nothing? Interacting with other people's communities really, really helped. You know, you, you get to know people. You kind of turn up in other people's streams and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of these streamers will have, like, discords and stuff and a lot of these discords will have like um, self-promotion channels you can like when you're going live maybe when you're first starting out you can um, post a link to your channel and just say what you're doing and stuff like that and maybe you'll get in a few people that way I say all this basically I got extremely lucky <laughs> with the timing of when I first started out because I was just doing a lot of like art on stream and then at the beginning of October I was doing a 30 day October drawing challenge where I was going to try and stream every day and draw a piece of art every day um, for, for every day in October and I did that basically except for like three days um, <laughs> but um, when I was doing this Limmy had kind of made a concentrated effort to try and promote smaller streamers he was looking for people to raid at the end of his streams you know he gets viewers of maybe like 2,000, 3,000 viewers at the end of his streams and so instead of like sending them all over to someone that he knows or someone they know um, he was looking for people who were just starting out and who were active in that community to try and help and promote and it it just happened one day that I'd posted in his Discord that I had that I was going live, uh, and he, he sort of followed me. I think he was following a few people that had been posted in that. And yeah, he shot me over a raid one day of like 3,000 folk. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with myself. It was, you know, it's incredibly exciting. You obviously, you get like a bunch of like followers and stuff like that, and they're not necessarily going to like stick around. They are his viewers. You know, you've got to try and win them over and try and show something that they're going to be interested in. But I think for me, like, I have a very kind of chilled kind of vibe where I'm just like kind of doing a bit of art, a wee bit of like the Bob Ross kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think people like that to have on in the background whenever they're working sometimes, just like a bit of company. And it's not too like intense or not too noisy or, you know, big flashing lights or anything like that. So what did your technical setup look like to start with and how did it evolve? So to begin with, when I first wanted to get started out streaming, I, I just... Um, bought a new 2020 iPad Pro. Um, it's one of the ones with like a USB port at the bottom of it. 
And I realized that by plugging a USB-C cable directly from the iPad into the MacBook that I was using at the time, I can grab a direct feed of the video from the iPad through QuickTime. And that was basically all I needed to start streaming what was on my iPad. I had my work MacBook, I had my iPad, and I was just using the Mac's webcam and these headphones as a microphone. And that was enough to get started, you know? I think I was using the Twitch streaming software to begin with, but then I moved over to Streamlabs. I'm still using Streamlabs, yeah. Everyone keeps telling me off for using Streamlabs. <laughs> when you're streaming, you're obviously wanting to upgrade certain things and do new things. And so like I bought this microphone. The microphone is a Blue Yeti Nano. It seems, it's, I mean, it's not the best, but it does the job. I was looking to stream like uh, my Nintendo Switch. Um, so I needed to buy like, I bought an Elgato capture device. And I, I very quickly ran out of ports on my MacBook because <laughs> I only had like two USB-C ports. Um, so I, I bought like a, an Anchor USB-C hub thing, this thing here, um, which has turned out to be the most useful thing I've ever bought because it came with a couple of like USB 3 ports, an Ethernet port, a HDMI out port, um, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and that was working fine. And that's um, that's about when I started using shoot, um, clean camera feed, <laughs> um, because I wanted a better quality webcam than was on the MacBook. And I realized as well, if I, if I was running shoot and I plugged in my iPhone directly through a cable, um, again, I could pull the direct feed from QuickTime and it was like instant, no lag, um, it was perfect. So it was. I kind of knew that I would have to move on from the MacBook and it was about whether or not getting a, like my own MacBook, maybe a more powerful one or just, I hadn't used a PC in about 10 years. I'd been, I'd been Mac for like 10 years, but I was like, if I'm, if I'm getting into the streaming, I think a PC is a good show because, you know, in addition to being able to run all of this custom streaming software, just like PC gaming and stuff like that, it's just, it seems a bit easier. So it does to be able to, Get everything up and running. There's, there's more support out there for it. I got a custom built PC, it was about 800 pounds, and I got that towards the end of 2020, and I kind of moved everything over to that. The only problem was whenever I moved over to a PC, I, was, I wouldn't be able to capture the video feed from my iPad very easily. And um, because that's like just a, that's the one thing that seems to work very well uh, on a Mac is that you can just plug it in and you can capture it. So I was looking at like, oh, you know, I could just buy like a, you know, one of the official Apple USB-C to HDMI cables for 80 quid or something yeah. like that. And I was like, I didn't want to do that. Um, but then I realized that the Anchor USB-C hub that I bought, the HDMI on it works perfectly. I just plug it into the iPad, I power it, HDMI out feeds, plugs right into my old gato. And so I just capture it like I would my Switch and it's working perfect. And then there was the issue about um, using your own app because I, I didn't know, I could, obviously again, I couldn't get a direct connection to it. But then through the support on your app, I, lo I looked into Air Server and Air Server seems to be working a treat. There's a little bit of like, oddness whenever you're moving the window about and stuff like that if you have it set up in OBS but um, and and there is a slight delay in the video feed coming through through airplay but I'd basically just offset my microphone audio by about like 10 milliseconds or something like that uh, and everything seems to line up pretty well. So can you tell us a bit about what makes a good Joff stream? I, I try and like make a nice and friendly kind of stream atmosphere and Again, like through like the, the some of the early massive raids that I had, some of the people that came over in those just sort of liked the general kind of vibe of the channel and started hanging about a bit more. And that's when that's when things get immensely easier. I mean, again, I I, I can't say that I've sat here and I've built from the ground up, you know, what what I've done here because I have had a very couple of like very lucky moments and little like breaks like that I, I try and respond to every single message in the chat if I can um, I, I, again I kind of like take a, take a few notes from some of the bigger streamers who have maybe average about like 70 80 viewers or something like that um, I did find like the ones I enjoyed most were the ones where they were taking the time to read through every kind of chat comment as much as possible I don't know I'd, I'd, I'd picked up little tips like reading them out on stream and then responding to them um, like uh, if there's one particular person that's having a little bit of like a conversation with you I'll maybe like jump ahead and read a few of their responses and then go back and try not to miss anything and things like that and um, it's, it's not always possible um, but sometimes even just that is enough to carry a conversation for like five or ten minutes. I don't try and get too worked 
bogged down in like what I want to do on the stream. I just try and let it happen. You know, if, if we end up going on some kind of mad distraction and um, based on what people are talking about in the chat, I'm quite happy to do that. Because one of the things I've found most beneficial about Twitch is, is meeting people. Meeting people and making friends has been the single best thing that's happened to me on Twitch so far. Uh, and it came at like a very hard time for everyone, I think. Um, so I, I do appreciate that. And it's the people for me that make Twitch. Um, it's not anything else, really. What do you do about mods and all that? In the beginning, when I was still getting started out, um, I didn't have a lot any mods because I wasn't actually getting like, once like regular people started coming in, I wasn't actually getting many like trolls or anything, or at least nothing that I couldn't handle myself. It's just a case of like typing slash ban and get that rid of that person. But um, then a few people suggested that I start my own Discord community. And I've, I was opposed to that, like, from the beginning. That's not something I ever wanted to do. And um, that seemed like a lot of, like, responsibility and management and not something I ever really wanted to get involved in myself. I was quite happy just sort of jumping about other people's Discord communities. But they eventually strong-armed me <laughs> and they, they made me do it. So I sat down one afternoon, I tried to uh, set it all up and stuff like that. I set up a few channels and tried to set up the permissions and stuff. Um, and I, at that point, I was like, I still I don't want to... I don't want to have to be like checking this Discord community to make sure people are behaving. So at that point, one of the people who we were, I was talking to in my stream um, sort of offered to, to do mod duties on Discord. And I was like, yeah, that, that'd be great. Thank you. And that sort of carried over to the stream. And now I only basically have like three or four mods. And sometimes you'll be streaming without any mods there because, you know, people can't always be available whenever you're streaming. But um, my mods are basically like, I would say some of my closest friends that I've met on stream. Um, and I just do trust them. They don't give anyone an inch, you know, like if, if there's someone dodgy coming in, we're like right on it, so we are. <laughs> give them a couple of chances and then, no, you're away, so you are. Uh, and we have a good laugh about it and stuff. But um, okay, I think me being like a, you know, a white man on Twitch, um, I'm not dealing with the same kind of abuse that other people are. Um, so again, I'm, I'm quite fortunate to not have to think about it too much. Um, I was going to say, like, you haven't got your sign visible today, but I liked, I liked that you've got the no fascists oh, yeah. or whatever sign. It kept falling down because I have to open the window now because um, it's, it's like warm. We'll bring it back. I was like, white man, but he's got no sexists and no racists, <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a good thing to have up in the back um, because... Well, it's, it's created by um, the partner of one of the more prominent streamers in the community, 1030. Um, his partner makes this poster. Um, and, like, it's a good thing to buy because you, uh, all the proceeds go to Refugee, which is a good refugee charity in Glasgow. And I think just a bunch of the community just feel like it's, it's a nice thing to have up on in the back and, and keep sort of the, the tone right. I was gonna, just going to ask about your, like, background music. Yeah, so for, for the background music, I've kind of jumped between a couple of different things. Um, there was, like, a service called Epidemic Sounds that you could sign up to for, like, I don't know, like a five or a month. And then all of the music on there was in okay to stream as long as you'd, like, linked their account and stuff. But it was all very generic sound and music it wasn't anything special there's there's like a channel called like chill hop um on youtube that's been massive for absolutely years um like probably about like 10 years and it's it's like really like lo-fi beats that people use to like study to or, or like have on in the background when they're doing something and then um, you can go into their website and um as long as you're posting the right stuff on your channel you can kind of have that on in the background and i kind of just stick something like that on sometimes sometimes i'll just pull up like a random like video game soundtrack on youtube because video game music is fine because it's a video game streaming platform <laughs> so obviously you've been an affiliate for a while but do you think you're going to get to partner anytime soon because your numbers are looking pretty good the, the partner thing um is quite interesting because it was like in the beginning of january and um, there was like a, a big sort of community thing that happened where we were all playing this game called Rust and we were all involved in this big like dramatic role play kind of story thing in this game for about the space of like two weeks. It was massive. It was like everyone was tuning in to everyone's channels to find out what was going on from different perspectives. And I seen just a, a massive boost in viewership in January. And towards the end of the month, I was like getting up to, to partner numbers and I was like, oh, this, you know, this would be cool. This might happen. Um, but I wasn't trying to pin my hopes too much 
much in it but ultimately it kind of dipped back down again which is fine I, I wasn't ever really that fussed about making partner um, the, the partner thing for me it'd be nice you know it's always nice to have like a nice sweet tick next to your name or something and, and to be able to call yourself like a twitch partner and um, it doesn't as far as i've heard from people who've who've had it happen to them recently does, doesn't really change anything doesn't really come with that many bonuses or anything like that you don't get more money i not really thought of it like that but yeah there's, it doesn't really have any rewards does it it's just like once nah. you can get paid it's kind of proportional to how many subs you're getting yeah. or whatever it is i guess so. you get a little bit more discoverability i think um, so it kind of snowballs from there you can make things like a stream team um, I think there's an option to get like a you know you can get a name that you've maybe been looking for that you weren't able to get when you first signed up as soon as you hit that like requirement and you can apply for it you don't really get anything out of it and I, I've seen people get partner and then be like extremely disillusioned in the following months because they felt like they were working up to this and it's just for, for a while it hasn't changed anything at all okay well that's good to know isn't it <laughs> <laughs> don't need nice to worry too much about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've, I've very much like just moved into like a, just coming on when I feel like it. Just do a bit of like chat and, and art. Really get right. you don't even like stream games that much anymore. Right. Yeah. So one thing that I've really enjoyed on your stream is your marbles and art thing, where everyone joins in and chat and they can sort of join in the marble race and then you sort of let them choose what you're going to draw. Uh, where where did that come from? The marbles and art thing has been like a really that got really popular for a while um, f throughout all of this I've always had in my head that I'd be able to use Twitch as like a platform to promote my own art and, and hopefully do something with my art more than I have in the past. Uh, art for me has always just been a hobby and something I've done on the side, done a few like commissions here and there and things like that but I've always dreamt you know of being able to like make like more money out of my art and I always seen Twitch as like you know if, if Twitch grows the Twitch will feed into the art and the art can feed into the Twitch and it's kind of like a, a symbiotic kind of thing there. And then with like the marbles and art, I started doing that thing where the winners of like these races would suggest prompts for me and I would create art on stream based on that. Um, and more recently, I've been using that as a platform where based on those ideas, we'll create like poster designs um, and I'll then work those posters from beginning to end on stream and then get those posters printed and then put them up for sale and i've done a couple of those now and i've been like absolutely humbled by the response it's been like incredible i, I do like they're like limited run posters and stuff i've just been very very happy with it i want to do at least like one every month and it's just it's just a nice thing to see because i'm finally making a nice little bit of money from my art and it's just through like the community that i've become involved in through twitch it's just it's been a very nice thing so <laughs> <laughs> looks good from where we're sitting as well. So what do you think about Twitch in general? Where do you think it's going? I think it's like people like you and, and like me that um, are going to be the main driving thing in, in Twitch's growth, to be honest. It's, it's like people not gaming. I think Twitch as a gaming streaming platform is kind of hit. It's kind of like potential there. And at least the thing that drew me to Twitch was seeing everything else that it had to offer, which was like people like yourself creating music and creating software live on stream and um, people like 1030 like doing all kinds of different projects and having massive chats with his community there, there was other people that were just having like agony ant sessions and like um, all kinds of different creative things and that's where I felt like I had a place in because I could come in and do my art and showcase that and and the sooner that Twitch recognizes that there's all of this variety on their platform that isn't just gaming maybe with a bit of rebranding maybe i don't know if the twitch name is ideal <laughs> for a platform like that i would i would like to see that in the future i would like to see more of a focus on what else is going on on twitch so big thanks to joff for talking to me and sort of sharing some of the behind the scenes stuff um i hope you'll go and subscribe to him straight away and join in for his next stream everything we've talked about is going to be detailed in a link on squares tv where i'm bringing together everything i've learned and built to make these better live streams videos music and podcasts so um, I hope I'll see you on there and you're going to have a good week. Bye.